once again, it's Joe the CRM chap here and welcome to another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. This is the developer's exam for those extending or building solutions on top of Dynamics 365 Online or the Power Platform. So we're on part three in a mini sort of focus series on, a series of a series on plugin development. So we've seen already how we can basically build a plugin, how we can deploy it into the application, we confirm that everything's working now. So for the for this and um, the next video, I wanted to focus on specific to a specific topic around debugging, how you can debug your plugins, because if this is something that is potentially quite useful for you to know about. Um, it has some bearing as well for the exam, in, in terms of being something that might come up on there. So we're going to home in first of all and take a look at how we can do plugin um, trace log, how we can debug using the plugin trace log feature that we get as part of this. So we can see we're in the project that we've worked through previously. Um, we have made just a very small change in here. We've modified this line on here. Uh, we've introduced basically a field name that will cause an error. This field does not exist in the application. Um, so therefore, it's not going to work when the plugin is deployed out. So we can we can verify that at the moment. I've basically pushed this out into the application. The browser changes on here to basically just a Steve, like so. Click on Save. As we can see, um, nothing's happened. We don't know what's gone wrong here, and we can't really diagnose it any further because we're not getting an error message or anything like that. Um, so we can't really see what's going on. We've got no window into exactly what's been fed in and why. Um, so in order to basically help us diagnose a bit further, and you know, so if this was a less obvious error, we want to be able to pinpoint exactly okay where is the issue going wrong. So we can use the trace log to help us do this. So we need to first of all enable. The application to basically write out into the trace log. Um, so we do this by going into advanced settings up here. It's going to open us up into the classic interface. And within here, what we do is we go to administration, uh, go into system settings. Then we can see under customization, we've got a specific uh, option here for uh, whether we want to enable the feature or not. So typically, maybe you only want to enable this for exceptions only. Um, because it's potentially going to fill up your database storage by logging out everything that you want to do. But for the purposes today, because it's not going to, because the issue is not throwing an exception, we're just going to select all on that and click OK. So at this point, we've enabled trace login, but our plugin's not been configured to support trace login. There's some specific things that we need to do to change our plugin so that we can diagnose things a little bit further. So we're going to go back into our plugin at the moment. The first change that we need to make is at the top up here. We need to basically get a um, get a reference to the tracing service and once we've got that we can then uh, continually write out to the trace service at whatever specific point that we want to in our code. So we, in order to implement the tracing service it's I tracing service uh, we'll just call this tracer like so. Uh, it's of type I tracing service so we want to basically cast it out into that particular object type and then we get this from our service provider like so if I can spell uh, so service provider get service and it's a type of oh it's a type of uh, uh, I tracing service then with that implemented we can then just write out into there to confirm that we've got it so we do that by doing tracer.trace and it then just accepts a string value on here um, so we can then just pop it onto here tracing uh, implemented uh, successfully now at this point we can then just repeat this so we can basically put in a specific um, a specific uh, traces for when we need to write things out. So we're going to pop a few different ones into here. So I'm just going to do copy paste on here. We're going to write out what we receive in, in terms of the first name and last name values. So in this case I'm just going to do a first name, a little trick that you can do here if you put a dollar sign before that then what we can do is we don't need to do a concatenation or anything like that. We can basically just reference our string properties uh, like so in there. It's quite handy that. So we'll repeat that for our second trace log down there. Uh, and then we just want to change that to last name. Uh, like so. Um, and then what we then will do is that we'll also do a trace down there in terms of the value that we're going to be mapping out. So again, it's probably um, a bit of a poor example in terms of um, you know, diagnosing, but hopefully it just gives you a flavour in terms of what you can do. So 
uh, because we're adding multiple lines into our if statement down here we need to add in our curly braces like so so I'll just copy and paste that up there so for, at this point um, we will just write out okay new what we expect the new value to be based on um, based on this down here so we'll just grab that like so uh, I think this will work it looks like it will do uh, new first name value like so um, that will still not write out but at this point we can basically just verify that okay it is writing out um, what we expect it to into the uh, into the application um, and there seems to be error in there let's just uh, uh, might not work on this one so let's do it a slightly different way let's just get rid of the dollar sign like so and we'll just do plus culture to title case like this instead Um, I'm missing out. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that should work. Uh, okay, so now we need to repeat that for our last name value, like so. So we'll just cut and paste that into into the curly braces, and then we'll do the same in terms of just grabbing this trace up here, popping it into there. Let's do new last name again. And we'll just change that to last name, like so. Okay. So we've implemented tracing now in our plugin. So now we can just redeploy this out into the application. So I'll just click build on there. Hop back into our plugin registration tool. We'll just update that through, like so. And there we go. Click on open. Uh, we make sure that we tick everything again. If we don't tick it, then it's going to unregister it potentially, which we don't want to do. So with that updated at that point, then um, we now need to basically repeat the uh, the steps back in the application. So that means going back onto our contact record. So again, I'll try changing that to to Joe. Let's say click on save. Yep, still not working as we expect it to. Um, but now, if we were to go out into the settings area, click on plugin trace log, we can see that we've got something written out on here. So we get some useful stuff on here. It basically tells us in terms of, okay, what, what was the operation that it triggered on, what step, IDs, at what date and time, etc. And then under message block down here, we can actually see the values that have been fed through. So we can see, okay, the trace has been implemented successfully. We can see that we've got a first name value coming in. No last name because that's not been changed as part of the operation. And at this point there, okay, we can see, okay, yep, yeah, the value should be that, uh, but, but um, it's not being output at that. So, you know, again, it's a poor example, but then at this point, okay, well, if I wasn't too sure in terms of what was going on with this code, I'd then be sort of like, okay, well, maybe this is the bit here that I need to focus in on because for some reason, um, okay, it's writing out that value, okay, to the trace log, you know, and it looks correct, uh, but for some reason, it's having a problem here in terms of mapping it to the field. Oh, okay, right, I can see the field on here is not correct at all. Um, I need to just change that back to first name and then we'll be all good on that one. Okay, so that's pretty much just tracing in a nutshell. Tracing can be really useful um, in terms of being able to debug things um, in the application. You'll be able to be able to see, you know, when specific, you know, points are reached in your code to make sure things are flowing through correctly. Uh, and they can be a very useful tool in terms of when you're figuring out, okay, well, why isn't my code uh, working as I want it to? You know, you can output your values into the trace log, see what they are, and then take appropriate action from there to fix your code. So I hope this has been really useful. Um, so um, the next video, we're going to be taking a look at another way in which you can debug plugins via the plugin registration tool. Uh, but I hope this video and all the other ones so far in the series have been really useful. Uh, so, so please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Try and do videos uh, fairly often. It would be great to have you, uh, have, you, have your support and have you along for the ride. Um, that's pretty much it for me today. So take care.